Hey everyone, Ross Marchand here, Director of Policy at the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. And today, on day upteenth of the coronavirus pandemic quarantine, I am joined by our street transportation infrastructure fellow, Nick Zayak. Nick, Nick, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful, as well as we all can be. Yeah, right. Yeah, as much as clearing that low bar of, you know, doing okay, trying to, you know, hang in there. Um, but there's a lot going on right now, a lot of legislative developments afoot. Do you want to fill us in on what's going on and who's proposing what? Okay. Um, as the response to, to the thing that's causing all of this uh, has moves forward, we are hearing or we are seeing various legislative relief bills going through and it, and among the things that's being thrown into these legislative bills is some form of what some may call relief other will, others will call a bailout to the postal service that is uh one of the kind of pieces that is part of all of this and usps certainly has an important part to play in all in the response and relief to the ongoing pandemic but the question is whether whether this legislation is going to have longer term further ramifications. Sure. So we see a few components of uh, Pelosi's recently released bill, and that bill, by the way, totals two point five trillion dollars. And there's plenty of congressional drama and intrigue going on with this proposal and the Senate GOP proposal. But it appears to me what Pelosi is proposing is we've got what um, an eleven billion dollar debt forgiveness in outstanding loans, uh, money owed to the treasury. And then what, Nick, I saw recently, a recent add-on, $25 billion, uh, just in direct money to USPS, um, just to tie them over. Is that correct? And, and what sort of implications does that funding have? That is correct. That's been reported. And, and, that, and the implications of that is it gives the Postal Service a couple of years of breathing room Mm -hmm. to make its structural adjustments and but realistically continue the current status quo uh, that will cover two three four five years of ongoing postal losses but at cost of that the illusion that the post service is a self-funding entity would be gone with a mm -hmm. $25,000 simple cash infusion uh, that is on top of of various debt forgiveness and spending limit increases and things like that sure which would still pop the bubble of a self-funding government agency but at least less transparently so than the 25 billion dollars and direct cash money to the postal service right and i get the sense that you know it's okay to tied USPS over. And everyone's talking about temporary uh, loan relief for companies, for states and localities, for federal agencies. You know, I think that's okay. And that's sort of one area or philosophy you could have of relief. But it's another matter entirely to say all this previous debt is forgiven in addition to temporary relief. It sort of kicks the can down the road in terms of reforms and in my humble opinion, um, excuses some bad behavior by USPS. And um, and really excuses the agency for poor management practices and basically funding and facilitating waste for years. Um, so what do you think, what's a good alternative response, if any, in terms of lending a helping hand uh, to USPS without getting carried away and trying to fix the entire agency right now um, in one fell swoop? Uh, absolutely. The number one response to all this is, if you're going to have a specific post or related piece of the pandemic response funding and and policy answer part of part of it will be manifesting in giving the USPS somewhat more money but it does not need to be a huge sum of money uh, relative to the existing cost of the USPS universal service obligation this is this should be a fairly small piece of money, maybe a couple of billion dollars at, at best, uh, to increase the postal capacity to handle the crisis, buy more personal protective equipment, mm -hmm. buy more supplies, cover sick leave, leave and things like that that shouldn't, or that what that need to happen now, but otherwise would, would be part of the standard negotiating process of USPS labor. 
Um, but what this does not need to include mm -hmm. is some kind of large sum of money that really gets at the overall postal labor cost issue. Um, this should not be removing debt that is accrued because they have bills to pay and obligations to their workers. Wiping mm -hmm. out that debt doesn't really do a whole lot. And, but there's certainly a case to be made for a few billion dollars that would, you would hope in the future, set a precedent that mm -hmm. should a future pandemic happen, that should not be a yet another case to throw another chunk of money at the Postal Service, but instead should be focused directly on what it costs to deal with the crisis right now and in the, mm -hmm. in the next year, 18 months. Sure, yeah, and it makes sense to pay attention to precedent. Uh, and in terms of other stuff, other than just the financial stuff and the fiscal stuff, what has USPS done in response to keep workers and customers safe from coronavirus and what can they do going forward to make sure that as many people are kept out of harm's way as possible? Well, they've worked with their unions to, to find some things that they, that they can work together on to make, to tide everyone through this very challenging time. Some provisions to give extra, extra sick time to mm -hmm. do letter carriers should they fall sick the ability to actually be able to call out of work should they fall sick and for mm -hmm. and and for the and, or and increased kind of sanitation for postal workers extra equipment should they they need it uh, but those efforts that extra equipment is fairly limited in scope right now sure yeah and it's you know paramount that you know workers postal workers are the front line sort of interacting with customers at a time when everyone is saying, hey, we need to practice social distancing. So it's important that, you know, we keep the mail flowing, especially at such a difficult economic time, while at the same time making sure that postal workers are safe, customers are safe, and postal workers feel welcome if they're exposed to anyone or if they're showing symptoms themselves to stay home without incurring any sort of retaliation. And you see across the federal government, right, people are trying to manage that balance between making sure that the essential national functions are done and completed while at the same time making sure that federal employees are not spreading and exposed to coronavirus. Um, but whether we're focused on that part or the financial part, um, crazy situation, there's so many pressing developments, it seems like guidance and it seems like legislative developments change by the hour. Um, me and Nick will continue to keep you guys posted as to the latest developments on all fronts and you can visit rstreet.org, protecting taxpayers, protecting as well for further developments. Thanks so much, Nick. And I don't know, we'll stay posted, right? Stay tuned. Thanks for having me. Thanks.